Well, hello, Lena. It's been a while since you yeah. and I have talked. Much has happened. Did we speak? I think we spoke before the the all the activity in July, right? I think it goes. Yeah, it feels yeah. like a while ago. Yeah, mm. for sure. And it has been a busy summer. Yeah. yeah well, certainly in the politics. Uh, how did it? Uh, how did it strike you that whole situation that developed around the late June? So the debate, and then someone tries to kill Trump, and then the way it uh, turned out uh, with uh, Kamala entering yeah. the scene. Yes. I think although many people were upset at the way Biden was seen to be treated, when we look back on it, it actually happened very, very quickly, you yeah. know, from the debate to the new order. But I think it's part of a bigger significant thing you really feel particularly watching the convention that finally finally the old guard are handing on the baton to the next generation because the dems have huge talent you know we could exchange 20 names without even blinking of talented, super smart people who are dedicated to public service, who are itching to have their time. And I think they weren't let off the leash, you know, um, while Pelosi and the old guard were in charge. Full respect to what she achieved in other ways, but it's time. And look at the reaction. Yeah, the reaction has been has been incredible, uh, very encouraging. And uh, yeah, no, uh, undoubtedly. But it's this thing in politics, though, is that the politicians they have a really difficult time letting go of their of their positions. Is this true in Australia as well? That people? Oh, absolutely. I think we've all got caught in this stuck two party system. And if you look, if you follow the trajectory. For most Western countries, the G8, the G20 and so forth, the economy has changed radically after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And they were a time of big governments, big infrastructure. People had jobs for life. And so the economies grew quickly. And people could actually plan you know, including having children and so forth, because they were felt secure with that. And then by the 80s and Thatcherism and Reaganism, it was this suspicion. Ray, oh, what was her name? Thatcher famously said there is no such thing as a society. There is just an economy. No, I'm sorry, Pet. I couldn't disagree more. But... There was this move to the individual and the individual family having to pay for everything. Yeah. That's right? true. That's and true. so we veered away from the collective in a big way for the last 40 or 50 years. And it's like, well, why should I help anyone else? I'm working hard. I just need to focus. So it makes for selfishness and it makes for head in the sand behaviour. Now, then you have the two parties at the end of all that just blocking each other in Australia, Canada, everything. My point took a long time to get there was big things like energy, national security, infrastructure need bipartisan 20-year plans or 30-year plans. Regardless of who gets in, this money is still dedicated, whether it's to hospitals or schools or energy. When you don't have that, and none of us do now, everyone's looking at three- and four-year terms, covering their asses, not paying attention to the future, this is what happens. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And although on, on the plus side, you know, the, the um, Reagan... Uh, 1980. So there is apparently this really reliable 40-year cycle that oscillates from, uh, call it the good side, where people are more decent. It's, you could say, middle class type of economy. That uh, is from Roosevelt in the 1930s 
to Reagan, and the Reagan period is ending now. It's in 40-year blocks, mm. right? Mm. And this is why you're now seeing unions uh, are regaining their popularity. And it does fit the astrology as well, from where Pluto is going next. Oh, that's and exciting. So yeah. yeah, and so, so it's just that, you know, for people that things don't move quickly enough and having no matter what you say in today's world that we're in a dicey scary situation because of people like trump and the people that are following him as well and he's not it's not just in the us you can see these these cracks you know appearing in israel and germany um mm. in brazil uh, they had bolsonaro now the new government is is more centrist or more center left and they're they're at war with Elon Musk and all of this, but there's, there's a constant tension around this, but I do think it's going the right way. It's just that we have to be patient enough, you know, to, to wait. Yes, out. and we're used to immediate gratification. So we're not so good <laughs> at a longer term plan. And when we all look back on this last eight years, nine years, if at the beginning we thought it would take this long, it would have been tr too traumatic for people. I think this is how it unfolds. You know, you've got to live it as it goes, and it will seem quick. Um, yeah, I mean, when everything... It, when time, history time, looks back, it's time, agonising when you're in it. When you're in it, yeah. Time is so distorted. Uh, when you're when you're inside a, a difficult period, it feels like it's <laughs> lasting forever. Yeah. And then later, you, yeah, it gets compressed. So, uh, And it's curious you said about bipartisan... You know solutions because there it's really the only way to go even if you make errors this to me is a perfect comeback for kamala harris on the border issue is to say in a debate hopefully or wherever but especially in a debate to say whenever both parties agree on something that's a really good thing you know to yeah. to implement something both yeah. sides agreed on that's the essence of government when you start to play these games where you want to do it your own way and the other party resists you this is how things break down and how you keep the country divided which is obviously what he wants to do right um so the fact yes. that democrats went along with it i think was a really good thing you know they should have passed that and then what happens and i'm talking in australia too and when you've just got this log ahead scenario people tune out and go well it doesn't matter because things don't change and they're right on some fundamental level because our Labor government, the equivalent of the Dems, is always so busy not upsetting the centre that they're unrecognisable, mm. you know. And I think victory favours the brave or whatever the expression is. I think it's by nailing um, your colours to the mast you're actually going to engage young people, you know. This is why we've lost 40 years, Reagan till now, with climate change issues true. too. Very true. Um, we've failed collectively as global citizens. We've lost 40 years. So even if Australia or anywhere else rolled out some huge program now, it's going to have teething problems that we should have dealt with 30 years ago and now have up and running. It's very like true. A country it's very... like Australia should have solar panels on every hospital and every school, the biggest expense for education and health, state by state, is electricity. Mm. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. What? Not yeah. the ultimate biggest, but a, a huge ongoing suck on the economy is electricity. That should now be cost effective. True. Right. That's and true. That money could be spent on doctors, nurses, and beds. Exactly. Yeah. Although there, that's another one too that surprised me. I, I heard uh, something through the Economist, and they tend to be, you know, a good good outfit in researching their information properly. And apparently, there we're now getting really good uh, battery technology coming online, and and the renewables are really growing. And even though it seems like every anything from conservative to right wing, they're always trying to put up a, a break on anything that is progressive because they interpret it as losing money or who knows. I mean, I, I, in this country, it's so extreme that they were even arguing to keep incandescent light bulbs. I totally don't understand that. Yes. What is that about? 
It makes zero yeah. sense. Well, the but... fuel lobby generally, the dirty fossil fuel lobby, we all know has been massively, massively influential in all governments, right? But here's the kicker, Andre. I can remember 30-odd years ago where our big coal mining company, and we worship coal in Australia. I mean, don't go there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they thought then, because people were still listening to scientists and everyone was going, oh, it might raise the world's temperature one degree. Oh, my God. You know, people were worried for a minute there. Mm -hmm. And those companies assumed, assumed, it's a joke now, that we and other countries would have to respond to this. So they wanted to be in at the ground floor. They wanted to transition from coal to other forms. They wanted to be the ones winning the, the gigs for the big tenders for rolling out green energy and wind turbines and solar. It didn't occur to them that it wouldn't happen for 30 years. So then they went back after about five years of waiting for governments to do this, they went back into their shells and went, cheap energy, stick with us. Mm. There was a window that we all missed. Yeah, yeah I know. And now, now uh, the effects are here and one can only pray that technology itself, in a way, is needed to solve the problem because without it, you know, without new battery technology, new new ways to offset the the problem that has been created, it's going to be very difficult. You know, so well it is, and I think it's also it's an a lazy approach to just throw your hat in the air and hope technology will get us out of this. Right <laughs> now, I have great faith in aspects of technology. But it's not just about the research and development to come up with an idea, whether it's carbon, um, you know, burying of carbon or reusing of carbon or whatever the thing is. As long as you've got these two boring parties, it, boring in the sense of unimaginative fighting everywhere, it doesn't go to the next level that it needs to go to. Right, right. But I mean, the thing is, you see, this where it gets complicated is that even if there's a party, usually it's probably the same in Australia. It's the party that is more progressive that will want to implement new measures, but they're always worried. Well, if we do this and it causes the economy to drop and then we run into the next election, we'll lose our our power. And then the other oh, side, absolutely. which is... And that's yeah. the end of the conversation. Again. Exactly. Again, <laughs> yeah. Know. Because I mean, look at Trump is saying that uh, you know, climate change means that the seas will rise by a millimeter for the next hundred years. It's a total lie. It's complete, you know, it's made up. But a lot of people think that's true. You know, they just like so many people think the earth is flat. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> anything is possible, but you can't progress, you know, and you can't agree on. I know, but there are this. little things that can have a big impact like banning plastic bags right now Good point yeah australia are pigs for plastic bags you see fam you go to any of the major supermarket chains and people will have trolleys with 20 plastic bags and wow <laughs> it's shocking and yet the governments are too timid just leadership it's called leadership and you actually say, well, we've left it long enough for people to work it out. They haven't worked out that you can actually get a reusable bag. So we're going to ban plastic bags from supermarkets and everyone would bitch for a week and then it'd be over, right? And they'd yep. have another bag. But this drifts on and on and on, you know. We've, we're the biggest island in the world, smallest continent, so we've only got coastline. Duh. We've got the yeah. best marine biologists and stuff in the world and we can't work out plastic bags. So you are know? you saying that in Australia, are you telling me that in Australia if if there's a an if something happens to promote uh, eliminating plastic bags, does the Republican, well, the Conservative Party in Australia 
start to do what they do here where any any inkling of anything and they immediately say oh they're taking away your your ability your to be somehow. Or, they're taking away your never your... mind the dead sea life i know it's such a primitive argument it is so play school and we've got to grow up and move on and i'm hoping Kamala represents a new era in that sense that I think people can cope with a bit of bad news in order to move forward rather than trying to put the shine on it all the time and nothing getting done. Yeah. You know, so I think people can get it. And so, okay, we're going to have a levy of 1% for something which is going to operate for 10 years to put solar panels on every school in Australia. I think people would get that. Yeah, you know? yeah, I totally agree. By the way, what, what's your feeling about Kamala? How do you, how do you, what do you say? Oh, I'm a total convert because I, I was never mad about her. I put my hand up. But she has stepped up. It's her time. Mm. And she's a different person, I think, really. I think until she's 59, right, mm. which is perfect mm. for this absolute time in history because I think if 35-year-old Kamala, 42-year-old Kamala yeah. was mm -hmm. still career building and doing the right thing and, you know, <laughs> doing all that stuff, whereas now I think she sounds and feels freer than she probably would even five years ago. It's true. It's true, actually, and the astrology is really graphic. She used the period... Uh, well, she didn't, it, was, it wasn't a choice, but it coincided mm -hmm. with the years of tremendous transformation in her life. That's a Pluto cycle to her sun and her moon while she was vice president. And that tends to really yeah. empower you. You find your, your, your ground. And one of the key things is that she has at birth that Pluto is next to Venus. This is a classic thing for the Dobbs decision and then becoming the spokesperson to say, how dare they do this, which mm. gives her a lot of strength and power. It may have been that, by the way, that really released her in, in the sense of realizing I'm here, most importantly, to do this because this is such an offensive thing toward women yeah. and toward human beings and so on. And now she seems quite different than, than back in 2020, 2021. She was more tense. Doesn't she? It's not just me dreaming that. No, it's true. It's absolutely She's true. She's just, yeah. and because while she was vice president, she was smart enough to learn on the job. Mm -hmm. Biden trusted her enough to give her a lot of work that a lot of VPs don't do. And so, like you say, astrologically and in every other way, it was perfect timing to mm -hmm. produce perfect. this fully formed leader. Yeah, I mean, if that, if that chart, if you push it, so that these cycles are in the upcoming years, then she'd be facing some really difficult, even if she won, she'd be facing a, a, a really difficult period, but she went through it psychologically and now can embody that and bring it into an election. It's, it's really good. In contrast, Trump's chart is a complete mess. And, you know, the thing is, oh, I've, really? you know, I've been saying for a long time about his health and, you know, people expect, well, if this is true, why doesn't he just keel over already? Mm. But you're seeing before your eyes, this guy is really declining. He, he keeps repeating now that he's running against Biden. It's like you're seeing dementia happening, right? You know, the, he was attacking Biden for the same reason, but he yeah. is equally, equally out in space, you know, from in, in terms and of himself. How, given what we're watching, which is him really deteriorating in front of our eyes and getting worse and more abusive, but just sheer ineptitude. I would never have dreamt we'd see Republicans, one after the other, one group after the other, saying, I'm voting for Kamala Harris and Walsh this election. That's profound in itself. And I'm hoping that's groundwork that it doesn't just spring apart immediately after the election, I guess is what I'm saying. I hope it represents a ground force what do you think will happen to the GOP after his expected loss? Well, I mean, the, the, the conventional wisdom is that it cannot, it will not happen right away because Trump started out as the 
the apparent problem, but really it's the mentality of the Republican Party. And you could see this going back to the Obama years. The uh, Republican voters were becoming crazier and crazier, and they would they would be, you know, trying to elect people like uh, Herman Cain, and you know they would go through yeah. this whole routine. And in a way, it wasn't surprising that they eventually settled on Trump. And they need to be deconditioned now. This is where leaders, if they were responsible, Leadership. they would speak to you and say, no, this guy really isn't a good person. And you, you, you got to tough it out. Like imagine if they had in 2021 all together said, no, this is not allowed. And they convicted him. Then by now, there would be a different party probably because people want to win elections and they would probably figure out, well, we've got what we've got and that's what we're going to support. And it would have yeah. been the solution, but instead they they continued to follow him, and that's why why we are here today. You know, so exactly. And now I think I can't see them recovering in four years from now. I, I think we're looking at eight years, probably at least. Yeah, at probably. best by the time they reclaim the party, if they do. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. I mean, you know that that adage: birds of a feather flock together, because. I mean, look at the, the number of people that are running. This is a, a blessing for Democrats because the, the Senate and the House, there are some really crazy people running that mm -hmm. are running way behind the Democratic uh, candidate because they're so crazy. That that person in, who's trying to be governor in North Carolina is a whack job. I mean, the things he says, you think to yourself, you know, you're in politics. When you're in politics, you should be political. Have some sense of, you know, don't say things that, have you 10 points down, you know, plain and simple. But uh, yes. it's like he spawns them and they try to do what he does, like Carrie Lake is another one. She's way behind. Yes. You know? Who can be the rudest and the cruelest and the most obscene? Right. And if nothing else, he does have that charismatic that's overused. We never saw it, but you could see other people fall on the ground and lick his sandals. I mean... Yeah, well, up to a point, though, because that's also, uh, it's diminishing. You know, this is the thing that we're getting a real lesson these years in, in astrology, Saturn, you know, the, the time and aging. I mean, look at Biden, look at a Biden clip in 2016. That Biden mm -hmm. was totally there and would have been yes. no problem dealing with Trump today at age 73. By the mm -hmm. time he was running in 2020, he was making me nervous. I remember watching him yes. oh, in absolutely. debates and thinking, Geez, you know, something's happened here. And now it's very pronounced. His communication ability. I'm not saying that he can't think. I'm sure he can think really well. Yeah, abstract. President, still but profit. getting his mouth to follow his brain has become really, really hard. And Trump is the same. I mean, if you look at him in 2016, very different than today. He's having a lot of trouble yeah. remembering words, keeping it straight. You know, he even let it out. You heard him, right? That he said he lost by a whisker. So now... <laughs> <laughs> now he actually lost. It came out. So he's not even disciplined enough to commit crimes properly, you know? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, so. And his followers aren't smart enough to grasp onto that. And we have, they, they just realized. Because I think they've stopped listening too. Because you could not seriously listen to a full rally speech. I defy anyone to make it through an entire 90 minutes of. Donald Trump. Oh, no, for I sure. I think they go for the buzz and they tune him out because it's not something that's inspiring even in its hatred as it used to be. He used but, to be able to inspire hatred. I don't think he can even do that now. Yeah, he, he, was, he was more there. This is the point around health patterns. Health sometimes takes you in a big way, a stroke or something, you know, that... that becomes a, a, a big moment or it can be like death by a thousand cuts this guy's been yeah. diminishing in front of our eyes you know and he's yes. he's just not the same as he was and it probably is signaling that something may happen do you feel that do you get, keep getting a hit or not on that he does he get there do you think to the election uh i'm very iffy on that if he gets it my thing that i've always seen is there'll be some sort of public breakdown that will lead to psychological evaluation. All jokes aside, I think there'll be an episode, let's call it an episode. There will be psych evaluations and he's not going to pass. 
you know. Well, I, well, yeah. No, I mean, it's entirely possible. I mean, one of the things is that uh, I wanted to ask you about what you said about September because I didn't get a chance to see your video on that. And wow. um, But, I mean, September looks really dicey for the sky. And, uh, you know, people ask me about the, the debate night. It's not so much the debate night. It's that the next 10 days are really brutal in the way this chart works. And that's when that sentencing is supposed to happen. And that's also up in the air because people say, well, what if he doesn't get sentenced? I don't know. This is looking pretty grim to me. I think the middle of the month is not going to be to his liking at all. You know? Absolutely. And um, I've never seen him go to jail. And I suspect even if the sentencing goes ahead, because um, we hear on the 16th what um, the judge's position is, Right on the immunity stuff, then the sentencing on the 18th. I look just as an American thing. I don't see them putting an ex-pres in jail. I think it will be a suspended sentence of some sort. I was hoping for house arrest. I don't even see that now because stopping him going to rallies, etc. So. I try and say to my viewers, have zero expectations of the sentencing. Mm -hmm. It could be suspended till for that's six months or something like that. Yeah. I think that's as good as it's going to get. Well, there is that, that his his chart is in a at least two plus years following this year that uh, legal entanglements. And the, the reason I know this is that planets are going to the same place where Jupiter was when they raided Mar-a-Lago. I know that spot uh -huh. is, is like that. So that's the direction it's going. So, and and keep in mind that whether it's suspended or delayed, the, the key now is that it damages him politically because then you can, the message can be, this guy's a felon, he's a convicted felon, you know, and no matter what they say about how this drives up his numbers, I'm not buying that. I think that that'll, that'll take away. No, and I think the, the biggest point. thing he's up against um, is not even so much what we find out about his criminal behaviour because that doesn't move the dial for MAGA. It's the fact that he's become boring. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> and that is the kiss of death for a showman. Boring and weird. I mean, honestly. Boring and weird. They started to talk about weird. weird thing. These, these people, Apparently, they are weird. I heard originally that was Tim Waltz. Yes, it was. It was. Then, it was at, at some point, they're just weird. And it caught yeah. on. Yeah. And it's left Trump standing there going, I'm not weird. I'm not weird. But I mean, weird. okay. So, like, I mean, that's another thing I wish if it comes up in the debate to say, okay, so you're not weird. Why are you talking about Hannibal Lecter? Why are you talking about yes. sharks and electrocution? <laughs> why do you do that? And then why do you say things like, I'm a brilliant communicator and I do the weave? What are you talking about? This is weird, okay? This is what it is. Yeah. It's a strange way to communicate and to bring up strange topics. Like we've never understood Hannibal Lecter. I think he thinks, people have said this, he keeps he thinks that asylum means that that immigrants come from asylum. People are coming out of mental institutions. He thinks the that man because he's yeah. such an ignoramus. I know. <laughs> you know, I don't know how he managed to cross the road in New York. I seriously don't. Yeah, no, it's yeah. true. It's, it's absolutely true. And, it, and, it, and, and there's been, once again, compare his communication, go back, especially 20 years, he would, you know, complete sentences. I mean, it wasn't intellectual by any means, but it was clear. It was forceful. It's not like that anymore. He's very hesitant. He can't find the words. He can't express what he wants to say. And when He's he says it... He's becoming a pathetic figure. Yes. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. 100%. He's turned a corner from being the big threat to representing and whatever it did, and now he's just pathetic. And it's that thing, people are quite simple in the sense they like to follow the strength, and he's not exhibiting strength. Anyway. No, yeah, no, very true, very true. And, and uh, you know, on paper at least, uh, Kamala is not someone you'd want to debate just because mm -mm. she's all there, she's a prosecutor, she's trained to respond to you in real time. That's what prosecutors do. They have to. You know, they're, that yes. this is their, their whole livelihood is hear the objection or hear the whatever it is, and then you respond. 
very dangerous, in my opinion, uh, for him. But what Trump is struggling with, too, he has never, since day one down the escalator, he's never had to respond to real political interviewers. He's avoided them religiously for True. nine years. So now if someone asks him just a very middle-of-the-road policy question, he, you know, has to demean that interviewer, has to demean the entire channel they represent, they're all nasty people, just for asking a really basic question. He has been so protected in that way. So you have the not very bright guy who has charisma being protected from being exposed and now he's been exposed. Equally, the light is now on Kamala and she's shining in the light, you know, literally. Yeah, 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 which is, which is it's, in the, it's in the astrology too. This had been my constant refrain going back to last year as we were getting closer to the election. Like I, I said a number of times, Biden's uh, candidacy is really held by her chart because, you know, you just surmise if someone's chart is doing really well at election time, then they're happy and it's because they win. Mm. But now that she's running on her own, it's even better. It's even better because but it's, she, it's yeah. actually, I think, perfect for both of them. He is still president and all of that entails, but the pressure's off of having to campaign. Yes. So he can do a very dignified last few months of work. And equally for her, the thing has been resolved. She didn't push herself through all those processes. She let the party come to her because they could have had an open candidate thing and all of that. And she knows the country's ticking over under Biden so she can fully focus on the campaign. So I think it works for both of them. It does. It does. And it, this is where, for me, the astrology was really tricky in that uh, it's one of those catch-22s where you, you can't really explain it in that Biden's chart was uh, is better enough than Trump's to win, but he was also you know, under heavy siege back in, in June, especially. And, and he has been really since 2023, a constant drumbeat of you're too old, you're too old, you're too old. So, but when he leaves, now the thing is, you probably heard his approval rating now is back up again, now that he's not running anymore, <laughs> yeah. now he's near 50. So that's what that is, that at, at election time, he's actually doing quite well, he's quite happy, but it'll be because she'll win rather than, be, than because he will mm. win. And I think it's actually better for him too, quite honestly. Uh, totally. Yeah. So yeah. I also think she and they in the form of Tim Maltz and her new team, I don't know who the players are, but they've obviously got a whole new social media team going, probably 25-year-olds, and it's working a treat you know, mm -hmm. it's really, really engaging this much broader cross section. Yeah, which was people. a weakness. That was a major weakness for, for Joe major Biden. Major weakness of the Dems was messaging. How many times over the years have we gone, oh, the Dem? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I mean, see, it's a top down they thing. They would have runs on the board, but couldn't express it or ask you to go to paragraph 63, clause 4. No, and now they're just nailing it. Yeah, no, and by the way, I mean, that, that, that that's credit to her astute political instinct because I'm sure she had to be involved in, okay, what strategy we're going to use? And it's yeah. been a really, you know, political, Obama style, we have the vibes, let's play with the vibes, mm -hmm. let's not get all caught up in the boring policy thing. Yeah, we'll do that too, but even if they attack us, that's not the, the main thing. The main thing is to get people uh, focused on enthusiasm. And when you start attracting a lot of young people, you're going to attract people that are good with technology that will probably help you with that. That was Obama's secret too. Obama had a, a big, big campaign with lots and lots of youth energy helping him yes. to make his case. You know, so. And I think they're doing it really well now. Yeah. Know? I've yeah. never seen anything like that DNC convention in my lifetime. 
you know. It was good. It was really good. And uh, although Democrats tend to put on good conventions by and large, but that was wow. that, that was really good. What they did this time that was the most important thing, perhaps out of everything, was they've clawed back. Look, as a humanist and a lefty, I'm not into nationalism per se. Let me say this first, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm Unless a it benefits your side. <laughs> who was born in Australia. You know, I don't lead with my national identity in real terms, and I think that's what's caused most of the problems in the world. However, the Conservatives have owned the flag, owned the word patriot, you know, owned liberty for so long. And in four days, that convention organically seemed to reclaim those things. And the Republicans who are coming over and crossing that bridge are saying, my country is more important than my party, which in the American context is a massive statement. And so it's brought the ownership of that identity into yeah. the very broad dem tent instead of being owned by guys in trucks with confederate flags and automatic weapons very true so that yeah. is a massive shift in itself very very true absolutely um you know when 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 you can own the word freedom that was always their word freedom 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 well now all of a yeah. sudden they want to ban books that's why uh why uh, Wall said these people are weird. You know, they want to they want to stop you from reading books. They want to take away people's rights. Um, that's why he said, you know, mind your own damn business. That's freedom. Yeah. You know, to do what you yeah. want to do. Um, and yeah, and they own it. And uh, I also thought it was brilliant that they brought on uh, quite a few Republicans who said, you know, uh, oh. important people who said this is not. I, I can't be in my party anymore because my party is is crazed at the moment. Mm. Mm. So, Massive. Yeah. So what does the astrology suggest, Andre, in the aftermath of the election? Well, I, I am still uh, thinking that just based on where Saturn is on, on election night, a couple of other patterns that are there, Mars opposite Pluto, it, even if I think if Trump is there for sure, and if he isn't, probably still the same because these people now are reflexively uh, denying elections. They will not certify or they will not agree so i i can i just cannot imagine that the election happens and then the next morning we're all celebrating it's over no it's no conceded. no i think no. it'll be a while before before it's finally settled but Probably i don't a see few them months do you think or no longer? I, well how much do you, i don't think so i think maybe before the new year or you know something like that i think mm. Uh, mm. i don't see another january 6th or anything like that i really don't no i don't see that either um, but I would like to see a bit more forcefulness from a federal level going through the attorneys, attorney generals of every state, you know, basically saying we're holding you responsible for doing the right thing at your election in your counties and people will be going to jail if they are found to be willful participants in undermining this process, you know. It sounds like that, from what I've heard, it sounds like they are doing that and they're probably being political and not saying it too too forcefully so as to... Yes, and you can say both ways. Like, you know, um, in the sense that we're all invested in having a full and fair election. So that's why we all have to be vigilant. And that's why I'm asking you, Attorney General of Georgia or whoever, <laughs> mm. to be particularly vigilant. Then I hope they're doing that enough. Surely they are. Oh. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I just know from the where the planets are, there's a bit too much energy in different parts of the U.S. chart to assume that it's going to be smooth mm. no no not Can't totally smooth but and a very disturbing statistic i saw during the week texas has culled 1.1 million voters yeah. off their rolls in the last two weeks allegedly we're just taking out those who have died and those who aren't eligible 
mm. you know, et cetera, et cetera. 1.1 million voters. Am I mad? Yeah, there's um, there's this uh, gentleman, Sean Briscoe. Uh, I'll be on with him and Linda on Saturday. He works in Texas as a, as a Democratic uh, on the ground operative. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask him that question. Is that, will that impact? How much impact will it have? Because sometimes it can have less than you think, depending on, uh, you know, the situation. Yeah, I, I think there trouble. also needs to be backup because people are checking their registrations and they are finding they've been lost in the system, even though they've voted in every, and so forth. So it is happening. Right? Mm -hmm. I think Dems nationally have to fund Dems statewide and be prepared for court cases after this. People are going to turn up on election day and not be on the rolls. It's going to happen. As well as them losing votes or destroying votes or refusing to submit votes. Um, there's a, people only going to jail now for 2020. You know, they've been no, so no. lax about no. acting on this. And it's, it's so remarkable that, that Trump back in 2020, because he knew he was losing, he made a case against mail voting, which is actually the most secure way to, to um, vote because you only get a ballot if you're on the registry and then you have to put your signature and they will cross reference and they, they'll, they'll throw it out if it doesn't match the signature that's on file. So that's how we vote in this state. And it's smooth as can be, but he doesn't like that because he doesn't no, like anything. but any also voting. you're fine because you're in a blue state. You've got DeJoy in the post office. Remember he was ripping out mailboxes before through, yeah. the election and closing polls early and the, they've got that going on as well as this and that, and it adds up. I don't think it'll be enough. To steal no, it, I don't know. I mean, in the but end, at I mean, the same time, it's enough to muddy the waters. I mean, the, the bottom line for me is, for me, everything is the loser status of Trump's chart, together with the signature that Kamala has, which resembles Clinton in '92, Obama in '08. That's hard to beat. When Jupiter is over your ascendant, yeah. and you're running for something. And you have, you know, this, this is not, she's not an, she's an accidental candidate in a certain way, but she's very competent. That's clear as a bell now. I think exactly. I think most it. of us thought, hopefully Joe would get in and in six months or a year, he'd hand it over to her. I think that's where a lot of people were sitting, mm -hmm. right, at best. But this is a whole new world order and you can't buy it and you can't bottle it. You know, so she's got the killer team in Tim Walsh mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and others. And I think it's a breath of fresh air because she's not afraid of complicated stuff. The whole system's been dumbed down to such an extent that people are spinning their wheels, you know, over really stupid positions. And I think she's going to lift the game. And I'd just like to share a bit of Australian political history because this is the vibe I'm getting. Mm. So the Australia I grew up in, in the 50s and 60s, and was a very conservative place, very conservative. <laughs> okay, there was no divorce in Australia. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could not get divorced unless one or other party was caught in an adulterous situation or something. So the thinking was doesn't matter if your husband beats you three times a week, you know, you married him and you stay with him, right? So there was no divorce. Women had to leave as nurses and teachers when they got married. Okay, you couldn't work as a married woman. Women couldn't have their own bank accounts. They had to be signed off by a father or a husband. I mean, it was a backwater mm -hmm. in that sense. 1972, we got Gough, Gough Whitlam in, who was this amazing, huge intellect. I don't know how Australia gave birth to him. You know, he was scary smart. Mm -hmm. But... He also had the killer team. 
everyone in every portfolio were totally across their area, great advocates for it. They rammed change through. And everyone was going, oh, it's the end of the Australian family and stuff because they, if you got pregnant and were married, you had to adopt the baby out as the pregnant teenager or whoever you had no choice. Your parents did it and that was that. And they introduced no-fault divorce. They introduced um, every sort of social change, much more tolerance of gays, land rights issues, um, the beginning of equal pay for women, the single mother's pension so women could keep their babies. And, and they did it all very quickly because three years later he was dismissed by the Governor-General, which is another story for another day. But in three years, they changed the country completely from the inside out with most people kicking and screaming, going, oh, oh you know, like, and then becoming proud of being a modern, productive country. And they did it in three years. Yeah, no, I, by the way, that in a way, that that's a global impulse because really the entire planet was doing this. This was happening in the U.S. to an to an extent as well because of the rebellious '60s and uh, started to happen and it's been growing. Yeah. And to me, it's unstoppable. I mean, this whole argument—it's almost like they they want to pretend that women aren't people. I mean, like, what is this? This is crazy. What, you know, women aren't human. How does this even work? You know. I know this is Taliban stuff. Yeah, yeah. The and Taliban that's is doing it. Talked about in the world's most powerful country like it's 1932 or something it is bizarre yeah yeah but it's there you have jd jd how is far? jd is talking about uh you know you, you hear him he's talking about how if you have no children you don't get you shouldn't get the same uh number no, of votes it's, it's going on and on like this so it's they're they're basically saying we need to go back to the 1940s or 1950s which in one sense i'm not sure why they want that because i guess culturally it was what they want but economically in the 1950s it was more fair around you know uh, the way uh, wealth was distributed for example because that didn't change and under unions Reagan. were infinitely and more unions. powerful yeah exactly so workers so, did better and therefore society did better Duh. yeah yeah, yeah. No, they I, don't see the see there needs to be more sociology in every school it, it drives well, me insane this is astrological that economists in particular are allowed to operate in economy land, you yeah. know, like it's divorced from real life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, uh, yeah, exactly. You keep things the same most of the time, but then there's no progress. Yeah. It's, it's totally yeah. Different. And I was just having a conversation with an Argentinian this morning before I came on. And, well, we know what's happening there, but... Um, this is what the IMF does to, to every country that's struggling economically. They say, devalue your currency and pay your workers less. Now, this is insanity to a non-economist looking in, right? If you pay people more, what do they do? They I buy think you'll find they spend the money. Yeah, I think you find it expands the economy. And we saw this played out during COVID in the countries that gave universal basic income that was considered a myth and a dream to people. It kept the economy going. Yeah, because they and spend it. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, you yeah, spend they... it in the fiscal space. Yeah, exactly, and exactly. They, but they cut off that line of supply and they have been doing this for 60 years. They just destroy countries because you end yeah. up with such a debt to the IMF, you can't do anything in your own country. Yeah. yeah and yet no, it's... we're supposed to still listen to these people. Very, very true. Yeah, very true. Un undoubtedly, I mean, I don't know how much of this is going to change in the near term. One thing that, that I... I like is that uh, there's this pattern where Saturn going into Aries, which it does next year mm -hmm. and 26, yeah. 27, that correlates with the last time we had gun legislation because Sa Aries is firearms and Saturn is 
uh, control of fire. So yeah. that's a, that's a I, I think a good reflection uh, pointing to the Democratic Party. It's not the only one. There are multiple other other um, connections where Saturn is and Pisces, Aquarius. You can go back in thirty-year blocks, and it's always a progressive administration. So there are all these markers that tell so you refreshing. that's where it's going. And we've seen the stats: seventy odd percent of Americans support some form of gun safety and gun of control. Course. Yeah, I don't think you'd find another topic that seventy percent of Americans are with them. So the will is there. There hasn't been the political will to deliver on it. And I think the new invigorated Kamala and Tim Walsh, you know, I'm a military guy, I'm a hunter, let's talk gun safety. Because I think the language is important. If you use regulation, um, the yeah. red nut cases hate it. So you just talk about gun safety. And now, this is what's so stupid, the 14-year-old who just did that terrible shooting and his father is going to be up on murder charges. So it's like America sits sets up its citizens in this way. It's all right. It's okay to give your 12-year-old and your 14-year-old gun. Oh, they killed nine people. Oh, okay, now you're charged with murder. There's nothing in between. Yeah, it is crazy, though. I mean, what? Why? how can a 14-year-old have a, an automatic weapon? I mean, this is just nuts. It's nuts. And that's that's the one... Thing that is mentioned by Democrats over and over, their their main main points on gun control are red flag laws to spot potential problems better, background yeah. checks before you buy guns, and get rid of the assault rifles because they're too powerful. You know, you you shouldn't they're be able to walk into a school and spray the place. You know, it's 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 very dangerous because you kill more people. Yeah. yeah. So so. Mm -hmm. um, now, one final thing, uh, what do you yeah. sense about, because this is really critical too, and now we're in this thing where the presidency is important. What about the House and the Senate? Do you feel like the Kamala oh. excitement will, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, well, frankly, I haven't been game to look. Uh, you know, I'm still <laughs> just on my knees praying for a blue fest. But I, I'm a bit twitchy about the Senate, I have to say, and the whole down ballot thing. I think the Dems are doing as much as they can. I think Kamala represents stability, vision, do, 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 that at least a lot of these guys who would be shoe-ins normally in these backwater counties that are still hugely significant, I think it, it's sanity versus the circus and if nothing else people can make that decision mm -hmm. you know and it's up to the dems to treat it like 50 little countries and let locals in every state work out what is the thing that's going to shift the senate race in the dems favor in your state i think that yeah has yeah happened that's true and i, I i'm i'm hoping too that and this is why I'm, I continue to be optimistic about the House and the Senate in that in 2020, there was this pattern where people were voting for against Trump. That's why he lost. But they were voting for Republican candidates in yeah, the same ballot, yeah. which was the reason why what he was saying was a total lie, because it was the same ballot. It didn't make any sense, you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. this time around, I think in part what happened there was that no one liked Trump or many people didn't like Trump, but uh, there were people who were really put off by the defund the police and you know because there were a lot of riots and this scares people and they didn't like that part so they were voting in one way for the president and another way down ballot but now my feeling is when you put together the uh women's rights issues because there are places where they're having um uh citizens initiatives you know voting initiatives to vote it up or down and the kamala factor and the fact that uh she, they would vote for her that it might also carry on down ballot and and mean that mm. they can hang on to the senate even though right now by math alone you'd say well you know the democrats are, are defending more senate posts so it's it's uh, a little less likely for it to happen and i think in the red states they're actually living under these laws now 
you can't tell me that people don't know women who are impacted mm -hmm. directly Absolutely. by this, regardless of their usual politics or religion or whatever, that are seeing these draconian laws. So it's about young people voting. It's about the women's turnout. It's so important. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that may be also the, the, because uh, people talk about how sometimes the Trump vote isn't counted enough and he tends to do better than in the polls. But there's also the young people, the incredible upsurge that there is of young people uh, I right think now. you've got the upsurge and he is, I'm making up the word, downsurging, <laughs> <laughs> meaning he's going down very fast. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, you know, just four weeks from now, let alone six weeks from now, he is going to have said such crazy stuff. And finally, eight years too late, finally, what's left of the old guard Republicans, they understand now, are they going to be on the right side of history or not? Are they going with Liz Cheney et al and well, thing, or are they going to cling on to this imbecile? And so I think there's a sense of momentum away from him that is only going to get more dramatic. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear that his strategy, his one and only strategy is to drive up the vote of people that are MAGA people, that are lurking in the shadows. Because in 2020, if you remember, he had a lot more votes than in 2016. That was one of the things that really disturbed people, that how, how is it possible yeah. that this guy uh, yep. know, had all these... But also, as many more also voted for Biden, because that's the curse Republicans have, is that they always have a 5% deficit, no matter what they do. But then mm -hmm. there's the Electoral College. And right now, what they're doing is they're short of money, but they're spending all their money in Pennsylvania and Georgia, because if they if everything stays the same and they flip Pennsylvania and Georgia, he would win. You see, so they're spending as much there as the Democrats. I don't think they'll win Pennsylvania, though. In my opinion, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that that wall no. will And they have to cheat like mad to even win Georgia. So it will be fascinating, and no one can relax until after their vote is in. You know, like. Oh no, that's true. That's true, and probably beyond. But of course. There, maybe we shouldn't confuse people. It, it is good to stay relaxed regardless. So relax. Yes. <laughs> stay relaxed. Yes, no, that's Otherwise... true. Um, and I spend a lot of time on my channel saying that too. So, yeah. you know, get out, get away from all this, and then put any anxiety into action. Into action. So yeah. How can I help someone else check their registration how can I take the neighbour to the polling booth on the day because she hasn't got a car? Just look at what you can do to maximise your vote and someone in your radius. You know. Yeah, excellent advice. It's it's an, an you know it can be underestimated, but if a lot more, many points of that kind of action taking place helps immensely because Democrats when they vote in mass they they win. You know, it's just a fact. Yeah. That's what always happens. Yes. Yeah, and I feel a real vibe that people actually want to be part of this election. I can't remember the last time I felt that or saw that in the American context. Like, really want to go there. Yeah, yeah. 2008. 2008 was the last time. Yeah, when exactly. We felt that kind of thing. Yeah. All right, that was fun. It was a pleasure being with you, Blue talking vibes. politics and solving all the world's problems. And I look forward to the next one. <laughs> We're so good at this, you know, I, I, like, I, solving I, the world's problems. We I, should get a problem a month that we have to solve astrologically <laughs> and yeah. sociologically. Are you around in September? I think so. We'll see. It's yeah. pretty mad in my world at the moment. <laughs> if not September, maybe we can talk again in early October or somewhere around there before the election. No, let's give it a crack in September. All right. We'll say goodbye to everyone for now. Bye, everyone. And thank you for having me on. Oh, it was a pleasure.